Good morning, I'm Abhi Daesh Vesta and these are the headlines of the hour. International Labor Day being celebrated today throughout the world, including Nepal. Not enough employment opportunities generated in the country. Nepali youths compelled to go abroad for foreign employment. Massive wildfire in Mahadeva of Saptari completely destroys almost 200 houses. One killed while extinguishing the fire in Dalitpur. Victims awaiting relief and resettlement in Dan. The United Nations appeals to extend aid to end the food crisis in Gaza. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres calls on Israel to follow through on its promise to open two crossings into northern Gaza and host Nepal to clash against West Indies A today in the third match of the five-match T20 series. Series level at one all. Nepal to announce its team for the upcoming T20 World Cup today. It's International Labor Day or May Day today. The day is being observed across the world as well as in Nepal today by organizing various programs with the main objective of social justice and dignified work for all. Various labor organizations are organizing programs today with a view to exert pressure on the concerned authority to guarantee the rights of laborers. Likewise, trade unions affiliated to political parties have demanded to include labor of the unofficial sector in the Social Security Fund and increase their basic salary. According to the National Census 2021, 11,038,000 people are involved in some kind of occupation. 50% of them are involved in agriculture, forestry and fish farming. 23% are involved in general or primary occupation and around 6% are in sales of goods and services. However, Nepali youths have been compelled to go abroad amid lack of generation of employment opportunities as per the number of laborers. The Roots of Labor Day grew out of violent clashes between laborers and police during the Haymarket riot in 1886 when thousands of workers in Chicago took to the streets to demand an eight-hour workday. The struggle during the 17th century ensured this right for laborers. The meeting between labor associations from across the world and labor leaders held in France's capital Paris in 1889 decided to observe the World Labor Day in all parts of the world. It started being celebrated on 1st of May from the year 1890. The occasion started being observed in Nepal following the labor movement in the year 1950. The government officially started announcing a public holiday on the occasion of the International Labor Day from the year 2007. An entire settlement has been burnt to ashes because of a massive fire in Mahadeva, rural municipality ward number one of Saptari district. Yesterday's fire completely destroyed more than 200 houses and animal sheds of 100 families. According to the ward chairperson, Jay Kishore Das, the fire which started at 2 p.m. was finally extinguished at 10 p.m. Three fire engines were used to bring the fire under control. Chairperson Das informed that more than 200 houses and shelters had been burnt, with more than 200 families displaced. Das further added that the details of the losses have yet to be ascertained. A few cattle have also died in the fire. Meanwhile, a person died while another suffered injuries in their effort to extinguish the wildfire in Godavari municipality of Lalitpur. Sankar Pahari of Godavari Ward No. 2 died while extinguishing the wildfire. Ramesh Pahari was injured in the effort as well. Meanwhile, the wildfire in Ananda Forest came under control yesterday. The fire, which had expanded to a local hospital, was extinguished with the joint effort of the local residents and security personnel. Victims of the fire of the of 29th of April in Rajpur 7, Harbas of Dang, have been compelled to spend their nights under the open sky. There is no smooth road access to reach Harbas of Rajpur rural municipality on the other side of the Rapti River. Because of this, fire engines could not reach the site on time, which led to the entire village being burnt to ashes. In the absence of the road, relief materials are also being supplied through the only boat in the Rapti River. Despite a few government and non-government organizations providing temporary shelters and food for immediate relief, there is no certainty regarding the long-term management of the victims. The massive fire had 
completely destroyed the village in Razpur rural municipality, Ward No. 7, Hadbas. As the fire engines did not reach the site of incident on time, the blaze was not brought under control on time. The local residents are in fear regarding whether their temporary settlements could also be caught by fire. With their houses, food grains and other properties burnt into ashes, the local residents have no alternatives to awaiting relief and resettlement efforts with tears in their eyes. The local residents are also facing problems related to drinking water as the pipeline supplying water to the village was also engulfed by the fire. After the entire settlement was destroyed by the blaze, the local government has initiated effort for immediate rescue and resettlement of the victims. Hot weather conditions, drought and wildfire expanding to human settlements have been increasing this season. In such a situation, it is imperative for the government to stress on preventive measures to avoid incidents of fire and to combat and curb damages caused by fire-related incidents if and when they take place. The government has initiated actions against internet service providers, ISPs, failing to pay their taxes as provisioned by the law. Actions are being taken against companies failing to pay 3.5 billion rupees in taxes. In their defense, the ISPs have alleged the government of not understanding the sensitivity of the sector. Following information about the ISPs not paying their taxes and hiding their income, which increased drastically after the 2015 earthquake, the Ministry of Communication and Information Technology had formed a probe committee. The committee had furnished a report to the government which concluded that the ISPs had been colluding in leakage of billions of rupees in government revenue. The report has claimed that the ISPs had been involved in irregularities by removing or reducing royalty and charges of repair and maintenance, support and telecom services. The report suggested to charge such fees from the ISPs, after which the government stopped furnishing recommendations to the ISPs for foreign exchange. The Nepal Telecommunication Authority has also decided not to renew their licenses. The Rural Telecommunications Development Fund exists for the development of telecommunication services in rural parts of the country. Service providers are required to deposit 2% of their annual revenue at the fund. In addition to that, 4% of the annual income requires to be paid as royalty. ISPs have been found of excluding such taxes in their total income. Meanwhile, the ISPs have alleged the state of failing to understand the sensitivity of the essential internet service. Nepali ISPs purchase bandwidth from Indian companies for which payment needs to be made in U.S. dollars. The ISPs are expressing their concerns as the Ministry of Communication has stopped issuing recommendations for foreign exchange. The committee of the ministry had investigated taxes to be paid by 11 ISPs. Of the 11 ISPs, nine have yet to pay their RTDF and royalties. The report has raised red flags into inadequate monitoring from the regulating entity Nepal Telecommunication Authority. It's time now for our segment, Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. Here's the question. What should be done to internet service providers failing to pay their taxes? Your options are A, taxes must be paid, B, actions must be taken, and C, hear their demands. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. And it's time now for the international updates. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres yesterday said that there has been incremental progress toward averting an entirely preventable human-made human famine in the northern Gaza Strip, but much more is urgently needed. He specifically called on Israel to follow through on its promise to open two crossings into northern Gaza so aid can be delivered directly from Israel's Ashdod port and Jordan and to allow safe, rapid and unimpeded aid access throughout Gaza. Guterres said that a major obstacle to distributing aid across Gaza is the lack of security for humanitarians and the people the UN serves. He added that everyone should do everything possible to avert an entirely preventable human-made famine. 
A UN-backed report published in March said famine was imminent and likely by May in northern Gaza and could spread across the enclave of 2.3 million people by this July. Guterres said that in northern Gaza, the most vulnerable from sick children to people with disabilities are already dying of hunger and disease. Israel pledged nearly a month ago to improve aid access after U.S. President Joe Biden demanded steps to alleviate the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, saying Washington could place conditions on support if Israel did not act. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said he will discuss with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu today measures that Israel still needs to take to increase the flow of aid into Gaza. Columbia University officials yesterday threatened academic expulsion of students who seized and occupied a classroom building as the standoff between administrators and pro-Palestinian activists on the Manhattan campus intensified. The occupation began overnight when protesters broke windows and entered Hamilton Hall, where they unfurled a banner reading Hinds Hall, symbolically renaming the building for a six-year-old Palestinian child killed in Gaza by the Israeli military. Outside the building, protesters blocked the entrance with tables, linked arms to form a barricade, and chanted pro-Palestinian slogans. After the occupation, Columbia University spokesperson Ben Chang said the protesters had chosen to escalate an untenable situation and that the school's top priority is safety and order on campus. A representative of the protesters, who identified herself only as a graduate student, told reporters outside Hamilton Hall that about 60 students were believed to be inside. At least, 65, at least 55 people were injured following a collision between a train and a bus in Los Angeles' Exposition Park area yesterday. The metro train carrying over 150 passengers and a University of Southern California bus collided. Authorities received reports of the incident shortly before noon local time on Exposition Boulevard near Watt Way. Spokesperson for the LA Metro, Dave Sotero, said the bus crossed into the path of an E-Line train. The light rail line runs from East Los Angeles to downtown Santa Monica, mostly along streets, and not all of the crossings have gates. Emergency responders transported two individuals from the University of Southern California shuttle to a nearby hospital, both in serious condition. Fortunately, they remained conscious and communicative and are currently in stable condition. 16 other passengers on board the metro train sustained less severe injuries. Before wrapping up, here's a look at the top stories once again. International Labor Day being celebrated today throughout the world, including Nepal. Not enough employment opportunities generated in the country. Nepali youths compelled to go abroad for foreign employment. Massive wildfire in Mahadeva of Saptari completely destroys almost 200 houses. One killed while extinguishing the fire in Dalitpur. Victims awaiting relief and resettlement in Dan. The United Nations appeals to extend aid to end the food crisis in Gaza. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres calls on Israel to follow through on its promise to open two crossings into northern Gaza and host Nepal to clash against West Indies A today in the third match of the five-match T20 series. Series level at one all. Nepal to announce its team for the upcoming T20 World Cup today. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.